So, Simon, thanks for again uh, your book, How to Be a Better Deal Closer, The Seven P's of Successful Deal Closing. Um, I'm really interested and intrigued by uh, planning and how you came about this process of effective planning and then planning to succeed. Yeah, so throughout my 25 year career, I've been involved in deal making, deal closing uh, through various different guises. And on every occasion, uh, people are involved in the process and people generally need guidance and they need a process and they need a way of moving forward. So uh, based upon my experience across many different types of deals in the technology sector, the professional services and, and resources sectors and others, uh, I've come up with some key um, areas that really all deal makers need to consider. Uh, and this has really been born out of my, exp my, my, my experiences. Uh, so the first area is it's critically important uh, to assess your strengths and weaknesses and also the strengths and weaknesses of the other side. The second area, and one good example, I was involved working for a technology company and there were a couple of major deals that have been log jammed for a couple of years and I went and discussed, uh, went up to Scandinavia and discussed with the other side and asked a lot of questions, face-to-face -face direct questions and that amazingly managed to unlock a lot of the log jam. The third area then, be really clear on your own parameters. What are your risks? What are your, who are the members of your team? What are the key issues? And really try and get into the mindset of the other side and be open about that. And I've experienced that that can also open up um, a dialogue and a successful dialogue in a deal mm -hmm. process. Uh, the location is very important and the dynamics around How that. do you mean the location? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so, um, you know, often if you're asked to do a deal uh, conversation in a cafe, right, um, it can often mean that um, the other side is prepared to be a little bit more flexible right. and informal. Okay. okay. Uh, conversely, um, if they ask you to go and sit in their office, then they might be a little bit more guarded. Okay. So you can read okay. some uh, body language and some language mm -hmm. around that. Then uh, uh, the, the next area then to look at is really important to consider your own primary issues and then your secondary issues. And how, how, how explain a little bit further onto that, so just so we can all understand. Yeah, so primary issues broadly equate with your needs. They're your key okay, issues. Okay. And secondary issues, more the, the wants, the, 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 the nice to have, but not the essentials. You're then able to create what, what I call the deal zone. I've come up with the term the deal zone. So what is your opening position? What is your bottom line and what is your likely position? So that really are some of the techniques I've, that have come out of my 25 years in deal making.